Hey, it's Shazam15 again. So, this week I went to watch Horrible Bosses. Overall, I would say it's a highly entertaining film, well worth watching. It's just good. I know normally I complain about these sorts of things, but then again, I've only done one previously, so <laughs> who knows how I will be. Anyway, masterful job. The plot was good. You didn't see all of the details coming. It was just brilliant for a film of its type. You then got the fact that if you are inclined towards intellectualizing it and filling it with subtext by inferral, let's face it, all subtext is inferral. It's perfectly possible to do that. This is especially the case with Jennifer Aniston's character Julia, who in many ways her interplay with Dale represents what we are told in society is supposed to be the ultimate fantasy boss. Essentially a very sexually dominant female who just wants it. And she wants you. However, Dale doesn't want it. So in many ways it's throwing a Judeo-Christian perspective of the changing of sexuality from a positive to a negative. In other ways it's very much for the feminists, it'll be a case of inverting the standard work relationship that is wrong. Anyway, for off that, we are going to go to where this entire thing works. I mean, intellectually, it is a piece to do with the way that bosses can be Essentially, it's the guilty pleasure of being able to do something that you should not be able to do. Fantasizing about killing your boss is fine. Going to actually doing it, that's wrong. However, that doesn't happen, but I'm not going to go into why, because that's the joy of the film. There are some surprise appearances that just made me squee, because I love them. So okay, you had Stacy, who was played by the girl who used to play Valerie on Sabrina the Teenage Witch from season 2 till she goes off to college. I can't remember what season that is, but it's nice to see her working again. The other one that really surprised me was Ewan Griffith. I'm not going to tell you what he does, but let's just say he cuts a wonderful figure if you like guys. I'm not saying I do, but, you know. Anyway, uh, what else are we going to talk about? We've done... Now... Interesting little point that I found slightly odd with the set design is the fact that the two worst bosses, which are Bobby Pellet and... I can't remember what Harkin's first name is. Dean, I think it is. Anyway, both of their houses are filled with cats. In the case of Harkin, it's pet cats. In the case of Pellet, it's big cats. Now, I'm not sure what they're trying to say about that, because it's a really weird factor of the set design, but... I don't know whether or not that has any significance, but it's kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> the only real way you can actually explain it, just off the cuff, is the fact that, well, the same set design. <laughs> Apparently they have a thing for cats. <laughs> it's a brilliant film, well worth a watch. Okay, you can possibly critique it with the fact that most people went in to see the Julia Dale interaction, whereas most of the film focuses on the other two bosses and their employees. But at the end of the day, it's probably done for balance. Then we have the joyous factor that I'm thinking of, but I can't remember what it is now. Oh, I hate it when this happens. Right, you've got the bosses, you've got the, you've got the injured. Oh, yes. You then got the fact that three men in many ways represent the sexual balance of males and behavior. On the one hand, you have Dale, who is lovely, loyal, he's the ideal guy to be if you can manage it, because his sexual desires are entirely constrained to his fiancée, who he loves very much. You then got his friend Grant, who is completely out of control sexually. He's a sex addict, it's quite obvious. But he just tries his best, but he always fails. And unfortunately, that's a lot of men out there. But it happens. 
you then got the balance point, which is Nick, who is essentially, so far as we can tell, he's in control of his sexual urges, but it doesn't really come up, so it doesn't really matter so much. In many ways, I wanted to sympathize with Dale, but very often I wound up sympathizing with Grant, which I really wish I didn't. But, you know, that's life. <sighs> anyway, really good film, well worth watching. Give it a go. Thanks for